Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the True Safety Podcast uh, with Apollonia Rockwell. Um, I'm Seth Silvers. I step in here from time to time when I'm not on the back end uh, with Apollonia. Apollonia, how is your Friday going today? Oh my gosh, it's awesome. It's going great. How's yours? It's going good. Looking forward to the weekend. Uh, it's been a good week. So yeah. um, on today's episode, we're going to talk about some things that we talk about regularly. And so if you're uh, if you're new here, we're going to really talk about what's, what are the problems that arise when your safety training isn't up to par. And so if you have been kind of wondering, like, you know, is my safety training up to par? Um, is there things we can do better Then I think this episode is going to be really, really good, um, for you. And you're going to learn a lot from it. Apollonia, you've been in the industry for a while. Um, tell me in general, do you feel like most people's safety training is like, how, how awesome do you feel like most safety training out there is? Yeah, I think that training is such an opportunity to really connect with your, with your employees, with the company. I think that there's huge opportunity here. And I, I don't feel like us safety professionals always capitalize on what a great opportunity it is to really connect and to educate and to have fun. So I, I've been in a ton of safety training and just like a lot of safety professionals. And I mean, we can all probably say a lot of training is terrible, but, um, but yeah, it's an opportunity at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And that was one of the first things that you started to notice is that workers are kind of disengaging from safety training. So what would you say is like the problem with most safety training out there? Yeah, I would say that it's just not fun. I think that it's not relatable. I don't think that a lot of the training is memorable and having fun. I think those three things are missing from a lot of training, whether you're purchasing training materials or it's the delivery itself. But, um, but those, I would say those are the three things. Yeah, I think that's absolutely huge to, to pay attention to because, uh, if it's not engaging, then unfortunately, like it's just, it's actually going to affect the safety side of things because if people aren't engaged, they're just going to miss over a lot of the details. So I don't want to just talk about how most people's safety training sucks. Um, like, let's talk about what characterizes great safety training. So yeah, then just the, just the opposite of that. I think that training has real, like great training has rememorable activities in there. So, or the content or the experience is memorable. So great training to me is applicable to, I mean, just imagine if you were in a classroom and you're trying to learn any type of subject, if we could, as safety professionals, bring that training to life by, for an example, if you're um, you know, you're talking about lockout, tag out. Well, how does that apply to your workplace? Maybe draw up, you can talk about the OSHA basics and the OSHA regulations as it relates to lockout, tag out. But I think the most groundbreaking thing and the most uh, valuable thing that you could do for your employees is actually write it out on the board or, or whatever it takes to say, all right, what are the situations that we have at our job site? Where is the lockout tag out jobs at our site? And how, and how are we currently doing it now? Everyone break up into a group, group one, let's, and then let's compare processes against all of our groups. How do you lock out this piece of, uh, this piece of machinery or this piece of equipment? Group number two, how do you do it? And maybe that's a, every time I've done that, there's been an aha of, oh my gosh, every single team is doing it differently. That's a huge problem. Managers in that meeting too. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is not good. And so then that, I mean, just setting up your meeting like that alone for a lockout tag out safety meeting, you're talking about how it applies to everyone specifically. The engagement goes from, I'm just going to sit back and think about the weekend during this entire meeting versus you're helping brainstorm, you're helping bring awareness to what's not working because that's what's going to happen. Every group's like, well, I never even freaking get this and that. I don't have the equipment to do it properly. Or so, you know, just whatever the problems are, it's identified right there in the room. And then you could talk about real life problems. So every time I've taken a subject 
to bring it to life. You just make it relatable. So then they leave doing something different, viewing something different. Right. And I think that's a huge issue with a lot of training is it's just, it's just a PowerPoint and then a test. And even like in the PowerPoint in virtual training, there's not much like activities or different things or like how they're facilitated so that it's just, okay, here's the information and here's the test. And there's really not that like tactile engagement. And I know, you know, I I've heard some people say like, if we're not, if we're not changing what we're doing, like physically in our body or in our mind, like every like five to seven minutes, then it just like everything plummets. And so like when people are just sitting there for two hours, listening to a training, like how can we expect any of that information to stick? To stick. Um, yeah, yeah. It's exactly. just not going to, it's not going to happen unless there's that level of engagement. So, um, there's a lot of, uh, there's becoming more and more great safety training out there. And even virtual training is going to a whole nother level. And we talk about virtual safety training on here a lot, but what if safety professionals are just in a place where they don't feel like they have the resources for, to improve their safety training, whether it's time or money, they might just be like, you know what? Like we just, we can't budge on anything. Like we just have to keep doing what we've been doing and hope it works. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've been there. I've been an in-house safety professional, or I've been on the consulting side where there's no, there aren't any resources. You have to just figure it out. There's not a budget to bring in AR or VR training right away. So I definitely can relate to that. And, um, and the best advice I could give is to go back to the examples that I, I kind of was starting on there was just, if you have a topic and I've found this, I found this formula to be successful in any single topic that I've ever trained on. And uh, it's to, it's to bring that topic and bring it to life through experiences of your employees. So that's when you're making um, a fire awareness and a fire extinguisher. I mean, fire extinguisher, that's um, training or any type of fire prevention training is a great example. That's an annual OSHA required topic. Okay, well, we can go through the basics um, through an OSHA PowerPoint or through any PowerPoint, but if we could talk about what are some ignition sources and every team identifies those and maybe someone even has a story or you just bring in one of your current fire extinguishers and you ask someone to do or ask every single team to do an inspection on that and what does that look like? You probably will find out that as simple as inspecting a fire extinguisher, it's not that simple. I mean, it is, you would think, but you get it in the hands of somebody and they most likely might not, I mean, if they're a new team member, haven't been through the training before, they, they might not know. And this, in this, these team activities aren't to make anyone look stupid. That's the worst thing that you could do is call somebody out and, you know, identify, draw the attention towards them because they didn't know. The goal is to make everyone feel comfortable and to make it a learning opportunity for everybody. Um, but that engagement piece, everybody loves to, you know, if you're in an organization, a company, you're in a meeting, everyone wants to team up with their buddies and, and talk and mm -hmm. um, it, it, it will brighten up and bring a different energy to your meeting every single time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it, again, it comes back to most safety training is not that great because it's just, here's the information, here's the test here's the certification. Let's cross our fingers and hope it works. And then if yeah. there's an incident, then like at least our asses are covered. Yeah. And that's yeah, kind exactly. of what it gets down to as opposed to really like including people into it. Um, and you know, it's the difference between if you're growing up, you're, you know, watching videos of how to be a good basketball player versus yeah, like on sure. YouTube uh, as yeah. opposed to like actually like going to practice and getting to be like a part of drills and learning and different things. There's just like yeah. two totally different things. Well, so and even going off of that example really quick is that you, like you said, going off of drills. So going off of something that you're done, something that you're physically involved with. And that's what makes me so excited about AR and VR mm -hmm. um, as it relates to safety training, mixing that with training, because you said it just perfectly is that the more repetitive the more real life, then the more 
memorable that experience will be right and so we could talk about we go back to the fire the fire uh, prevention example is we could learn about it through a powerpoint of what osha says how to, how to react to a fire what a company needs to do to um, keep employees safe okay well then we can also the next step would be having a fire extinguisher in your hand. So you're doing an inspection. It's like, okay, well, at least I have some sort of hands on. And that was, that was a great experience. But then the next level, level three would be an AR or a VR experience where you can see and be in the room where a fire extinguisher is located and a fire goes off on your job site and you're the one that goes through that experience. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, just take that very simple example. Obviously, when you go home at night and a month from now, what are you going to remember the PowerPoint or the time that you actually got to be involved with putting out a fire? So mm -hmm. that's what I'm super, super excited about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you kind of answered my question of like, where, where do we see this going? What does the future of safety training look like? Anything else that you want to add of like why the future of safety training is only going to get better? The, yeah. I mean, just, studies show there's so many case studies that I will, I'll be so excited to share this, but there's case studies working with the Colorado um, OSHA training institution. They are partnering with so many um, companies like 3M, where they have stats and studies that show the more exactly that, the more real life and experience can be, the more memorable and the more repetitive. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we can bring any safety topic to real life and people can experience that for themselves, then the more confident that that person will be in, in when it's time to react out on the job site. And so that's how it all ties in full circle is that's how employees will become engaged. But then the biggest piece of that is how to protect themselves, how to protect, they have the knowledge and the, and the tools to protect the other people that they're working around as well. And that creates an overall environment where accidents don't exist. Yeah. Well, and I know, you know, one of the first industries and it's still taking a long time to adopt it, but one of the first industries to really adopt um, virtual safety training in a pretty significant way with some medical, like medical school, to where um, I've heard stories of first year medical students, where they're, you know, fresh out of college, first day on the job, they put a VR headset on and get thrown into a surgery, where they're operating on somebody, and, and that person dies, like right. they like blow it. And in all of a sudden, this moment where they realize like, holy crap. Like I got to figure this stuff out. I got to be engaged where like the weight of the situations where you can feel that weight earlier on, as opposed to just training and training. And then all of a sudden you're out on the rig or you're on a construction site and you know, you have those like nerves because it's like, there's a situation you have to act on, but it might be your first time. And you're always going to be nervous your first time. Like you're yeah. always, there's always going to be some question of what do I actually do in this situation? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's going to over time, those nerves are going to decrease because people are going to have access to like those experiences earlier, which is just going to be mind blowing. So yeah. that kind of gets us to, to kind of bring this to a close, but like, why is it important in the safety industry that training, we don't just keep using the same training. Like, why is it important that we continually innovate training and push training forward when a lot of the decisions of what's safe to do and not do, they're the same. You know, some of like the right thing 20 years ago was the right thing. Today. Still the right so, thing. Yeah. So why it is it, why do we have to keep innovating in, in safety training? Yeah, because the goal is still zero, right? So the goal for safety professionals, for leadership, for anybody, for anybody in the company, the goal is zero. The, the goal at the end of the year is to have zero incidents, uh, zero first aid, zero environmental um, incidents. And so the goal is still zero we're training and we're training and we're implementing more safety programs and processes and it's not working. Our overall fatality rate in the United States has, has plateaued 
So we have not seen movement in quite some time. And so that, that was pre-COVID even, you know, we're still plateaued and pre-COVID we, we were in a booming, thriving economy and across all industries. And so even in the oil and gas boom, when resources were there, when money was there, we were still experiencing the same amount of fatalities as we are today. Mm -hmm. And so that leads us to think, what are we missing? There's something missing. And so now that we have that knowledge, it's our responsibility to do something about it. And one area of improvement, the one thing that we can control is training our employees and the experiences that we bring to our employees. Mm -hmm. And so it's our responsibility to, to protect our community's workers and workforce. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's why, because we care about our community, hoping that everyone listening, I know that they care about their community too and their workforce. And so um, the moms and dads working to provide for their families. And so everyone deserves a future. And I think that um, it's, it's a huge gap that we can make progress towards today um, by just doing small improvements to your safety training program. Absolutely. And again, how we can improve safety training is going to be something we continually talk about because this is a moving target. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And again, the goal is always zero. And, uh, you know, we've, we've seen time and time again, that making investments into safety is one of the best. It's one of the best and one of the most profitable investments that a company can make. Like you're, you're gonna get that. It's just, it's worth it. Um, it's worth it financially to avoid all those incidents. It's worth it as far as the lives of your employees go and just the livelihood goes, it's worth it on so many levels. So we're going to keep talking about this. So Apollonia, this has been a wonderful conversation diving into what just why we need to keep talking about safety training and how we can keep improving it. So thanks so much. And uh, we'll see everyone next time on True Safety Podcast. See you next time. All right. Bye.